So today we're working on a system of equations. Okay. System of equations. And make sure you guys are taking notes. A big deal about this is you guys are actively learning by taking notes and I'm paying attention, not playing a uh, computer on the side, not watching Netflix. It's kind of early for that. Uh, eating your breakfast is kind of meh, um, but make sure you guys are actively learning. Okay. All right. So a system of equation is the idea of, we learned this in algebra one, of more than one. Okay, more than one. If I give you a basic line, let's say y equals to 3x plus 2, in this case, when I draw the line, in a graph, one, two, put a dot. Remember, this is my B, my one intercept, and M is three. So my M is rise over run, rise three, one, two, three, and the run is one. Well, we never say solve for a line because a line is an answer of infinitely many points. So what do I mean by that? Is if I ask you guys to plug in x is zero, y, plug in zero, three times zero is two. Well, you can change your mind. What if I say plug in one? Three times one plus two is five. Hmm. Plug in two. Three times two plus two is eight. So it constantly changes. And what a graph is, is a visual representation of all those answers. So if I plugged in zero, we ended up with two. When I plugged in one, we ended up with five. And if I plug in two, we ended up with eight. Now, to come off this, well, I didn't graph all those points. Well, we draw a line so that I don't have to graph all these, or sorry, calculate all these little tiny points in between. But what a graph really is, it's a line made up of all these little tiny dots. All these little tiny dots make up the line. And do you guys really want to find the points for all those little tiny, oh, sorry, you guys want to plug in values for each of those tiny points? You guys really want to plug in 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3? No. But the cool thing about a solid line, a line in algebra, is that when I draw this line, it says, what's the answer? All these points are the answer. So if I wanted to look up what a decimal would be, let's say 0.1, I could go up to the graph, make a good estimate what it should be. If I want to look up two point something, go ahead. And we can get an idea of what those values would be. Now, when we, ask, when we make this into a system of equations, we pit a line versus a line. These are fighting words. We're going to fight two lines together. And I'm going to go ahead and come up with a second line. y is equal to negative x plus 6. y goes to negative x plus 6. Now, if I went and tried graphing this graph, um, this we said was something like, two, three, up here was five, and then so six is here. I'm gonna draw it a different color. And the line will look something like this. At six, the slope is negative one over one. And it turns out we're gonna hit a mark. We're gonna mark right there. So at what point do these lines share in common? At what point would there be a solution that is true for not just one equation, but for both equations. By looking here, it kind of looks like it's going to be 1, 5. So our goal now is to verify, is 1, 5 going to be an answer to both these equations? So let's set that up. We're going to say, is 1, 5 a solution to the system? So we just plug it in. So y is 5 is equal to 3 times 1 plus 2. Please notice I plugged in the x and I plugged in the y. 
for my next equation, y is equal to one, right? Sorry, five is equal to, oops. Five is equal to negative one, negative one plus six. Is this a true statement also? Well, on my left, three times one is three, three plus two, five equals to five. Yes, this is a true statement for my first equation. And five is equal to six minus one is five. Yes, this is true for my second equation. So yes, one comma five is the answer, is the solution to both y is equal to 3x plus 2, as well as and y is equal to negative x plus 6. So our first goal is to say, hey, I see two lines, and lines have an infinitely many set of solutions. But when I introduce a second line, do these two lines now share a common answer? And what we do is we plug in our common answer, our x and y, into both equations to see if both of them will give us true statements. And they are. They did. Let's come up with another one that looks a little harder. The question is, is 1, 2 a solution to 8x plus 3y equals to 14, and x plus 9y equals to 19. 8x plus 3y equals to 14, and x plus 9y equals to 19. So what we do, since they gave us the answer, we're just going to plug it in. See what happens. 8 parentheses plus 3 parentheses, does this equal to 14? And parentheses plus nine parentheses equals to 19. Okay, if you notice what I did there, I just lay, left um, each of the variables as a parentheses. I'm gonna plug in the values. X, we said, Y, we said, X is one, Y is two. X is one, Y is two. So right now we're verifying that our solution that we're given is a solution for the system. That's right. So 8 times 1 is 8, plus 3 times 2 is 6. This is 14. Yeah, that worked. So 14 equals to 14. We are winners there. How about the next one? 1 plus 18. Does this equal 19? Yeah. So 19 equals 19. So how would we answer this? The answer is yes, one comma two is a solution. Now, the follow-up question to this, is this the only solution? Is this the only solution? Now, I'm gonna go to Desmos real quick and check that. Let me Let's go to Desmos. Oops. And it was 8x plus 8x plus 3y equals to 14. Oops. Next one is x plus 9y, x plus 9y equals 19. All right. Now, as you can tell, straight lines are straight. They don't curve very much. You can pick up two rulers or pick up two pencils in your hand, and when you match them up, 
they only hit each other exactly in one spot. And as we see here, the spot that they do hit each other is, is one, two. So we verified this not only by algebraically plugging in the value, but we also verified it by graphing it. And these are the two ways you guys are going to do it today. One, you guys are gonna verify by one, plugging it in algebraically like we did here. And two, you guys are gonna decide what is the solution by graphing it. Now, in, to be able to graph it, sure, Desmos is nice, and I don't have to simplify the, the formula, but we're gonna have to simplify it, because for us to graph, y equals mx plus b is our go-to equation. Okay. So let's do one more as we practice this. Mr. Ko. Give me one second. So I think when it comes to plugging in values, this is fairly simple and something that, that we can um, do. Now, I wanna talk about graphing lines. And this stuff is kind of review from Algebra 1. So let's give you guys um, this. Y is equal to, so graphing. Y is equal to X minus one and Y, is, sorry, not Y. X equals to negative four. So in Excel today, you guys are going to be graphing these lines and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and say, okay, let's graph the first one y equals to x minus one, the m is a invisible one, and the b is negative one. So remember the b is the y-intercept, so the y-intercept is at negative one for the dot, and the slope is up one over one, up one over one. We end up with this line that looks kind of like that. And then we said x is negative four. We're gonna graph x is negative four, x is negative one, two, three, four. So we're looking at this problem and like, man, I gotta, I gotta manipulate these graphs so they kind of run into each other. And then the next problem is, what value would that be? The hard part about us when it comes to graphing is if we're not graphing on a computer and we're graphing by hand, it is kind of hard. It takes a lot of work to make sure these graphs lined up nicely. Like I could try to say, okay, this is one, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. We could say, oh, this kind of looks like negative five. Okay, so if X was negative four and Y was negative five, would this be a true statement? If I plug in negative four, y equals to negative four minus one, hey, this is negative five, that, that works. But I would like to say this, graphing sucks. We have to do it and we have to learn what it looks like visually, but I want you guys to see, there's actually a hint here. What is x already? x is already negative four. I want you guys to notice that x is already negative four. X is already negative four. X is already negative four. So if I want them to be the same system, the same answer, well, they told me x is negative four already. So we're gonna use something called substitution. And one of our first ways of solving a system of equations algebraically is by just substituting one variable for another. Now remember, this was x, right? But didn't the second equation say, well, if x over here is negative four and you wanna be the same as me, well, you have to be negative four now. Now this x also has to be now negative four. Oops, yeah, whoops, I copied that wrong. I kept saying negative four over and over again. This is a negative one from the original equation. And this here is, sorry, when you repeat the same number over and over, you kind of have to write it. So now x becomes negative four. If this is true, then negative four minus one is negative five. 
So if x and y, oops, if we said x for sure was negative 4, then y has to be negative 5. Hey, and that's our answer. Now, I want to ask you guys this question first. Which one do you think would be easier? Us graphing it out and hoping our graph is nice and accurate, or two, solving it algebraically? Give me a sec. I want you guys to turns out, turns out that the algebra will always be easier because graphing could be a fraction. You have to make sure your graph is nice. My graph there is barely adequate. One cool thing about graphing stuff on the computer, Desmos, it's already accurate. It's going to be automatically straight. So there's some pros about graphing things on the computer, and that actually would be faster than al algebra if you had a computer. Okay, let's do another problem. Now, simple problems are not going to be, you know, always simple. Like what I mean is math gets harder, and we're going to have to simplify some things. So let me give you guys another example here. Okay, let's try this next example. It's going to be um, x plus 2y equals to negative 6 and y equals to 1 half x. No, not 1 half, sorry. 1 fourth x. Now this problem looks a lot more terrifying. Looks a lot more weird. But let's go ahead and solve this graphing. Now, the first thing is that we always want to have stuff in y equals to mx plus b. That's the easiest way for us to graph. So let's go ahead and solve for y here. To get y alone, to get y alone, we're going to have to get rid of the x and the 2. So let's do that. x plus 2y equals to negative 6. I'm going to get rid of what's farthest away, minus x to both sides. We have 2y equals to negative x minus 6. because I wanted to solve for y. And you get y alone. So I got rid of the x, it's farthest away. Next move, we're gonna divide everyone by two. y is equal to negative, whoops, divide everyone by two. y goes to negative x over two minus three. So we have equation one and equation two. Equation one can be rewritten to be a little bit nicer. So let's go ahead and graph this out. So negative one, two, three, put a dot. And the slope is negative one over one. M is negative one over, sorry, one over two, negative one over two. So we can go down one and run two. Or, remember, this could be also written as 1 over negative 2. You can move that negative around. So you can go up 1 instead and back 2. Let's graph our second line. Our second line is our m is one over four, and our b is zero. Start right in the middle here. And my slope is up one, run one, two, three, four. Or just to practice this, this could be negative one over negative four. Go down one and go back one, two, three, four. Okay, so we have a point where these two lines meet. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's nice or pretty. Doesn't look like it's nice or pretty, right? So there's a couple ways of doing this. One is actually counting the values. But you know what? Let's make a guess. This looks like it's going to be negative 4. 
and negative one. That's kind of what it looks like, kind of one, two, three, four, right? And then down by one. Let's see if this works. If I plug in negative four comma negative one into the problem, let's do the second one. That one's easier. So y is equal to one over four, negative four. So y is equal to negative one, because four divided by four is one. Okay, that one worked. We just graphed it. The second one is y is equal to negative negative four over two minus three. Remember, we're using our second version here. Negative negative is a positive. Y is equal to four over two minus three. This makes it y is equal to four divided by two is two minus three is negative one. Hey, this works too. It turns out our answer is negative four, negative one. Seems like a lot of work, but it works. A little nitty gritty. Now we're gonna try something else. We're gonna try substitution again, like we mentioned before, and we're gonna end up with, now let's try substitution. X plus two Y equals to negative six, and then we have y equals to one over four x. Okay. So which of these is already set up for substitution? Okay, so the idea of substitution here is to you wanna identify what can you plug in. Well, x and y, here is y's alone. So we're gonna plug in y into this problem here. We're gonna plug in y into this problem here. It might look a little funny, but that'll be okay. X plus two, we call this y, right? Is equal to negative six. Now, here's where our algebra one skills have to be really good. You have to be okay with plugging in anything. And we said y was going to be one fourth x. See, y is one fourth x. All y's in these problems will now be one fourth x. All right, we're gonna simplify it. x plus, what's two divided by four? That is one half x equals to negative six. Now here's again some practicing. Now, we have to add the x and the x. And please understand, it might be a little hard because of the fraction, but please don't freak out. To add a fraction to a non-fraction, we need a common denominator. What am I counting by here? I'm counting by twos. So we're gonna change this to two over two. Two over two is the same as one. Two x over two plus one half x. Let's rewrite that a little better. Two over two x plus one half x equals to negative six. How many x's do we have? What is two halves plus one halves? That gives us three halves x. So when we change it, so when we change it here, we end up with two over half, or two over two plus one over two is three over two. And our last step here is to get rid of the fraction. So we multiply by the reciprocal to both sides. So two divides two, three divides three, and we're left with x now. On the right side, you can do this one of two ways. What is, so we're at this two ways as we review. What is six times two? That's 12 divided by three. 12 divided by three is negative four. The other way, or, Divide first. Can I divide six and three? Six divided by three is two. And negative two times two is negative four. Okay, if you divide this, this becomes two, and then two times two is four. 
Now, remember how before when we graphed it, this was a straight guess and check problem. We guessed negative four and we guessed negative one. Well, we know for sure now x is negative four. Now, for these types of problems, once you find one variable, we have to go back and find the other. Once we find one variable, we have to go back and find the other. Now, there is a cool thing about these equations is that the hint's already there. I found x, I still need to find y. Hey, isn't y equal to one over four x? Just give me x and I'll tell you what y is. We said we know what x is, x is down here. y is equal to one over four and x is negative four. That's what we came up with. Four divided by four is one, y is equal to negative one. Our answer for the system is negative four, negative one, which is what we came up graphing. So this is the idea of substitution. So we actually went through like three different ways or two different ways of solving today. First, we went and graphed it. Second, we used substitution and we also practice verifying by plugging it in. Now, if I wanna go back and just double check it, let's double check it right now. It's, we have x um, plus two y, give me a second Alex, minus six. That's plug in negative four and negative one negative four plus two times negative one equals to negative six. Let's see if this is a true statement. Negative four, two times negative one is negative two. And negative six does equal negative six. Hey, that works. Let's check for our other equation. We, well, we just did it. Let's do it again. Y is equal to one over four X, I think. Yep. So if x is negative four, do we end up with negative one? The true negative one equals to one over four times negative four. And it's true, negative one, negative one. So when graphing, just one more thing about graphing. When you're graphing on iXL or any of these programs, if they give you something like 3x plus 2 is equal to 8, or 2y is equal to 8, you can't graph it like it is here. You could plug in zeros if you want, but I always recommend writing this in slope and intercept form. So always solve for y. Solve for y. And that's one of our first strategies. So I want to minus 3x to both sides because I want to solve for y. Get y by itself. We're left with 2y equals to negative 3x plus 8. Our next move is to get rid of the 2. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. And that's how I write it when I'm doing Algebra 1 problems. So y is equal to negative 3 over 2x plus 4. Now the graph is 1, 2, 3, 4. Down 1, 2, 3 over 2. And then you can graph it on iXL a lot easier. To show you guys how you guys are gonna be graphing this, first, this is how it works. Click which equation you wanna graph first, blue or gold, blue or gold. You click the blue, and then we're gonna start at three, one, two, three, and then you go negative one over one. So you just click the two points. That's how we fast, that's how fast we graph it, okay? Afterwards, we click the next one, I see x is uh, positive five, x is positive five. So you graph a line like this, positive five. Take a look, where do these values meet? They meet at, looks like it's going to be, that looks like five, negative two. So we write five, negative two. 